Good evening. I'm Chris Jansing. Day 385 of the Biden administration. The Republican Party's divide over the January 6th insurrection appears to be deepening, just as GOP members are intensifying their efforts to take back the House and Senate. Today, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell publicly rejected the Republican National Committee's resolution that censured Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger for their work on the 1-6 committee. McConnell also pushed back against the RNC's characterization of the Capitol riot as, quote, legitimate political discourse. We're all, we're here. We're here. We, we, we saw what happened. It was a violent insurrection for the purpose of trying to prevent the peaceful transfer of power after a legitimately certified election from one administration to the next. That's what it was. Whether or not the RNC should be sort of singling out members of our party who may have different views from the majority, that's not the job of the RNC. We were here. We saw what happened. But McConnell's counterpart in the House, Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, today defended the RNC censure, which was largely backed by allies of Donald Trump. But uh, the RNC was talking about, they were talking about, everybody knows anybody who broke in and caused damage. <laughs> that was not called for. Those people we've said from the very beginning should be in jail. What they were talking about is the six RNC members who January 6th has subpoenaed, who weren't even here, who were in Florida that day. McCarthy has refused to speak with the House Select Committee and eventually could be the target of a subpoena. That panel has also asked Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani for testimony and documents and late last year moved to have former Trump chief of staff Mark Meadows referred to the Justice Department after he failed to appear for a deposition. Tonight, committee chairman Benny Thompson told NBC News the committee is focused on the next steps for both men. Rudy Giuliani obviously didn't show up for a deposition today. What's the plan for? Well, we'll discuss that in our Friday meeting. Are subpoenas on the table? Subpoenas are always on the table for discussion. Right. You mentioned yesterday that uh, Mark Meadows might be more central than you see him before. Have you since locations were down? Have you been finding out more about his specific role in all of this? Well, we would want to see, based on some of the archive material, whether or not there's information in that uh, that we could perhaps tap uh, Mr. Meadows even closer. Although, as you know, we've already made the referral to, to DOJ, so uh, he can always say, look, I'm ready to talk. Or if you've revoked the referral? If we got an inkling that Mr. Meadows would want to talk, then we would probably make the request to DOJ to defer it uh, until that conversation occurred. Thompson also said former Trump DOJ official Jeffrey Clark took the fifth a bunch when he spoke to the committee last week. The chairman says members are now talking about possible immunity for witnesses who plead the fifth. Meanwhile, NBC News reports investigators have learned Trump demanded to talk to his vice president on the phone on January 6th, but he couldn't reach him. There is also new information tonight on the role of extremist groups leading to January 6th. Sources tell NBC News that House investigators are now, quote, scrutinizing rallies and events as far back as a year before the Capitol riot in an effort to identify a broader network of planning and the causes of the attack, zeroing in on events attended by members of domestic extremist movements like the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers in 2020. Those events could include COVID lockdown protests, armed rallies at state capitals, and Stop the Steal rallies before January 6th. And tonight, Reuters reports the FBI is investigating a meeting on January 6th, 2020, January 5th, 2021, in a downtown Washington, D.C. garage. It happened between Stuart Rhodes, the now indicted founder of the Oath Keepers, and other far-right groups, including the Proud Boys.